Welcome to the official AFL Fantasy Podcast with the Traders. G'day with the Traders, I'm Roy, I coach Destroy and I'm here with Warney. Coach of the Wand Dogs. Yes. Coach of Calvinator. Now I'm excited to hear about this one. I reckon yes. there is a heap going on and thankfully we went straight to the big whoop dog. Yeah. To get for it done. The Bulldogs. They are, I'm gonna call them the most fantasy relevant team oh. in the competition. Wow. Lucky you're I'll doing pay that. that. Yeah. Well, well this is why I was supposed to on there. I was supposed to be doing the Bulldogs. Yeah. And dog's like, no, 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 cow. Yeah. It was too important. Bulldogs. I'll take this yeah. one. Warn dogs. We've Stepped got it. Up. Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. All of them. <laughs> He's got it all. Yeah. All right. He's made for it. Let's <laughs> look at them. So they were top six for the fantasy points for, and you go, oh, yeah, just in the top third of the competition. That's okay. Yeah, good But man. they are the biggest at the top end, and mm. this is why. They had six players that averaged 100 and more last season. Wow. Six. Pretty amazing. God, remember we were looking at teams that had, what, none yep. earlier on. My wow. goodness. Keep See, going. So no, I wonder think, you wanted it. You've got me hooked. Yeah. North Melbourne, the first one, I think they had three players over 78. Oh. So they had six over God, these podcasts anyway. get better. <laughs> they get way better. <laughs> they average, this is the stat that I like the most, they averaged 4.5 fantasy tonnes a game. Oh, get out now, of Now, the town. next best was 3.5. So they average an extra tonne. One whole extra hundred. Yep. That's Significant. It's massively All significant. Right. So they've changed a little bit because they've lost one of their big performers and one of those players that did average over 100. Mm. He's gone to the Lions. That is a Josh a Dunkley. So he is out and that will change some things. Okay. Mm, you've got me interested. Very interested. So let's talk about some of their big players. Last year, Bailey Smith, he was their highest averaging player. Um 935k, you'll pay for him. What are his first 10 games? Yeah, huge. Well, that's it. So he averaged 119 at the start of the year. Huge. It was massive. Unreal. Had injury and suspension in there. Um, was slower at the back end of the season. Um, but obviously has a fantasy game about him. He does. Him. He had and a lot going on too through that season, remember? He did. There is meat on the bone there. Now, a few people would devastate that he missed out on his DPP. 0.6% he missed out on gaining that So you look past status. that. I'd, I'd say just that's give it close. To, yeah, you just give it to mm. him. That's because he played in the midfield in the final, mm. 85%. That was his season high. Final shouldn't count towards oh, count. it. Don't start. Final shouldn't count towards it. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> let's talk about the next player that I think is close to a lock for me. Right. <sighs> Jack McRae. Oh, I knew you were going to say this. And I, I understand it. I understand it. Do you it. want to know why? Oh. Well, like we, you two start with him every year. Go. I get sucked in by week three and then we all regret it. He, well, how could you regret this guy? He's in his second season. Really? He, he, he averaged in a, price. He averaged 104 in his second season of football. Now, he's been 100 plus in every single year since 2014. I think we remembered a stat about since 2016 that uh, Zach Merritt is the only player that's averaged. Oh, yes. That's because <laughs> McRae in 2016 averaged 99. Oh, really? So he's actually better than Merritt. <laughs> okay. But I won't argue no, with that. Thankfully, no he one didn't get 100. His issue is, though, he gets on that wing and he sooks out there, Cal. Oh, that's where God. you are that's going to talk about. I He was on my never again list. Yeah. I did not want him in my team ever again because he sulks. Yeah. So this is, you know how, because that was quite a bold statement by me um, regretting it. Can I just, I remember mm. there was a reason. This was the reason. So in those from round 15, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games, he had three hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. You, that is just not acceptable. And it's what you spoke about there, the sooking on the wing, et cetera, et cetera. That stretch in the last – in the back end of footy, that's not okay, dog. So leading up to that time there, yep. um, so up to round 14, he was averaging 111. Yep. That's what you wanted him that for. perfect, yep. Then he only went at 93 after that. Mm. You can say, though, in the final that he played, he did have 123 points. He did. He switched on so that. that sort Finals, of cow, though. You don't count you that. Don't count. I'm looking at his CBAs for right. the year. So he actually had more He's, on average. yeah. Than any other midfielder. He's he's their most used player. Mm. Now, Why the then is, do I see him on a wing? Okay, so the <laughs> thing is for that, so he's their most used midfielder at 64%. Then you've got Liver, who was at 58. Like, I yeah. feel like he's only in the guts. Yeah, So change. Um, 
you got Bont as well at 58%, and then Bazlenka, 53 And then Trelaw all the way down at 36%, which basically he was in that mid-50s um, idea before that. Mm. And then he headed to the back line. And obviously you had Dunkley that was in that mix as well. Yes. That was in those – they're the core guys. So who's going to so Dunkley's the out. You think McRae? I think McRae just at least continues that, if not increases that. Right. So he's priced at what? One – uh, 104. 104. It's, it does feel very He's a 110. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yes. I can't it, argue with that. He's got to be a 110. He needs to be better than that stretch. Points I, will be there from Dunkley not being there. Yeah, 100% they will. That's like it's, it just the, the simple maths on that. I feel like I feel like Bailey Smith is the one that – Yeah, Bailey yeah. Smith is an option. You know the old saying, Roy, you know, burn me once, mm. shame on you, burn me twice, shame on me. Yeah. I just – I said last year I'm not going through this again. Yeah. And Dog has just made me do it again. I know. We'll all have him again. Yeah. We'll, we'll, both, we'll all be on by week three. Where am I going to fit him in my midfield? I don't know. You know what he's done, though? He's just been – he's been incredible. Yeah, and he is incredible. But what happens if we do it and then Audi, Audi sulks to the wing and he turns into Gaffy? Oh. He gets – he's got a head tilt, this guy. We can't forget that. Mega. Do you know what his four previous seasons average were? That 104 is an anomaly cow. No. 123, 116, 113, 116. They yeah. were the four seasons prior to last yeah. year. He is 10 points under price at a minimum. He's 115. He could be 120. 100%. I'm, yeah. pr- I'm locking him in. That's okay. a bargain, 104. But I do feel like Baz is going to be – Really, they really big. Be. The other yeah. one that could be big as well is the Bond. I'm bullish on him as well. I think you get a little bit excited when you keep looking at – you're looking, focusing on one team at a time. You go, oh, these could all be options. So yeah. he's priced at 100. Now, he averaged 108 after the buy. Yeah. Um, so it was a 97 in the first half of the season, 108 in the second half. A um, couple of 140s in there helped. So he started showing that ceiling. He's, he's a machine. He is. He was massive in their final too. Yeah. So what, 140, was it? Yeah, it must have been. <laughs> That was uh, oh, so. I don't know. He's another one that is an option for you. I don't think you can do it. No, no you can't. As a straight, as a straight, mid. not a straight mid. We got we liked him last year because he did gain the Ford status. Too right, we mm. liked him. So. Oh, and he's very good. Mm. But mm. all right, uh, you've got Trelaw Liber there, which I don't think you're picking either of them at the moment. Trelaw moved to that half back role, mm. so just knowing where he could be flicked around, and also just stress on his body. Yeah. Like you worry about it. He obviously has uh, – where is he? We can Trelaw. never forget the silly salmon. He played 21. If you've he played, never yeah, seen exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. He played 21, but he had issues in those games. Oh, didn't he ever? Um, Good yeah. calf. Because the two yeah. seasons prior, it was 13 games and eight games. Yeah. So, like, you just – Every contest is a stress on your heart. Yes. When you own Adam yep. Trelaw. He pulls Imagine up Trelaw from every contest. Trelaw and Dangerfield in your team. Oh, my God. All right, we've got a couple of locks so far. What about locking in their ruck? And that is Tim Spicato English. Tempted. $901,000. So he had a bit of a break, well, a massive breakout last season. He was the right pick for a lot of coaches Mm, that did start with him. And I didn't like it, them starting. And then he went and – He was great. Dunked that on our heads. Went from 80 up to 102 average. So it was a massive – he was the, the best pick of the Rucks, basically, when you're saying that. So his poorest scores, though, last season were 58. That's yep. when Sweet rucked with him. So they kept Sweet in the Sweet. side there with him. Not and the other one was 69 when Steph Martin played. They were the only two that he went in with a, a ruck with him. Yeah. So you can take those out. You can. Because we won't see that again. Because what I think is going to happen now is that Rory Lobb, who's come across – He's going to play as the Ford. He hates rucking. Ruck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he hates it. Does he? Mm. Yeah. I don't know what his story is. I think sometimes he wanted to be more of a ruck than he wants to be oh, more of a Ford. I thought he wanted to be more forward. I don't know what his story yeah, is. Yeah, you've got to worry does, about those guys that prop does, anyway. <laughs> does Lob coming to the team actually hinder English more? It could slightly. However. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And this is something I was racking my brain over exactly how that's going to work. But it's still that coming of age of Tim English. He's young. Lob's no good in the ruck. No. no. So they, they won't want him in What, what it's good it. for is those games I where, he hates it. where English did suck because he had a Sweet and a yeah. Martin yeah. next to him. You're not seeing that. No. Because they aren't very good no. at the, as the forwards. No. Okay. What do you think? Better or worse? I think he'll be about the same. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair Will call. he be the number one ruck in the comp? Uh, yeah, I think he will be. Yeah. I think he will so be. So it's that 102 average. So you think he's going to be about the same as that? I don't know how many rucks we're going to get this year to average 100. Oh, I think I made that call a few weeks ago and you laughed at me. I'm mm. laughing. Him and Marshall will be over 100. Oh, Marshall's over 100. Max, so, Max will go 100. Who have you got there? O'Brien goes 100. Oh, do you hold on to things, dog? Didn't he? Yeah, angry. Tim English. Tim English. Can't still holding on to it. <laughs> Tim English. What's the average? Only about the same 102. So 99. Going, 99 now. So he's not even going to be in the top. <laughs> no, nah, no ruck will average 100. 99. Is he still going to be the best ruck? <laughs> Heard it first. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Marshall and him will be – Marshall will be oh, – jeez. Help me out, Roy. He's got fewer <laughs> question marks. Marshall will be. Does Tim English have fewer question marks over him? Uh, no. English will be the top ruck. <laughs> With an average of? 101. <laughs> we are supposed to help people here. <laughs> this is helping Why me. asking me then? Get a laugh. You're the one covering the team. You what do you think he's going to average? I think he's going to be 105 to 110. He can be. 110. Could be. We've seen Rucks do that in the past. He can do it. He does enough around the ground. He yes. has like he's good. 120 plus scores. Yeah. He's going to need a few of them. Oh, I agree. He's he, – Remember he, how he started he will be the year. Best, he dominated. He'll be the best Ruck in the competition. So English, the first few weeks there, 106, 101, 138, 105, 107 – he was just hitting the tons. And then later, he did show the ability to go a bit bigger 132, yeah. Yeah. 116, a one, couple of 114s. So I think he can push that 110. Yep. Okay. Right. right. We found another you one. Are, right. You are right, Warney. Where you've, you're sounding more correct as I oh, listen. Yes. 105 would be more accurate. I agree. Okay. Who else you got? Oh, let's talk about some more players. <laughs> well, now I was going to look at this, your biggest lock out of them. Oh, and awesome. that is Toby McLean. Yeah. $401,000, got uh, the Ford status there, which is nice. So he gets a 30% discount on an already low average yeah. because um, he didn't play in the home and away season. That's key. Key. Because he played in the finals and racked up a nice time. So we don't count finals. 21 disposals, <laughs> nine tackles. Not as part of their average, Calvin, but we can count it when we're looking at them. Lost me. To yeah. pick them. Right. Because it means that he was fit. He was a sub, actually, in a game in the season. But so that means – so can Bailey Smith have forward status now? Yeah, he yeah. gets it back. Because we don't talk about – Oh, oh you're almost Hang so on. confused. <laughs> anyway, so we're picking Hang Toby on. McLean. 401. <laughs> Look, Toby McLean, welcome back to Destroy. Yeah. It feels yeah. like such a long time ago it ever. that he was kicking around, and he is well and truly welcome back. So, again, I guess a bit of role there for him – Will he just be that half forward sort of thing again? That's fine. But he might swing up the wing a little bit because yeah. there's that opportunity for him. He used to, back in the day for Destroy, he used to get a run through the guts as well. Yeah. 401, I don't care where he plays. No, that's the thing. He's going to be sort of, Way yeah, if you wanted that. to draw any parallels to this year, Will Brody was around that price. Yep. Um, yep. Not going to have that same role as what he had. No. So he may not hit that. 90 odd or whatever he mm. ended up with, but um, but he's going to be a very serviceable mid price player yeah. that would at least get us to the buys. Yeah. You need a couple of them just to unlock the puzzle. You do, and I think he's at a, 400, a prime one. Yeah, it's a perfecto. I think so. All right, um, just now I wanted to talk about the defenders. They've got this group that are about the same, mm. and they average about the same. They do their thing. Bailey Dale, who had a bit of a breakout last year, he was very good. Caleb Daniel, who's been small perennially potato, small potato, small potato. perennially good, but also um, – Is he forgiven? It's a long time ago now. 20 points that day in Ballarat. <laughs> <laughs> Full game. Is it forgiven? I remember the time we walked in through that door over there. It's certainly not forgotten. Oh, Anyway. No, he, I can still picture it. That's not forgiven. That nah. is not forgiven. So has he still got a line through him? It has that? to be. Dog? <laughs> yep. 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 No, so we're, we're, we're picking them in draft because you've got Bailey Dale who went at 89, um, Caleb Daniel at 87. Then the one a little bit further down the list at 72 average was Ed Richards who very much came good as the season went on. And I think a few people were bullish on him as a, um, as a pick for last year and probably for draft. But from round 18 through to round 23, he – Average 96. Mm. So that was better than what the other two good uh, defenders did yeah. for them. So he, he was very could good. be in the mix there with that. 
everyone loves a blood nut in the back line. So um, he could be your Jake Bowie of next year if you wanted him. But played every game. So he's someone that is definitely there in draft. And that's 72 next to his name. I think that could be that. Understood. At least mid seventies, if not uh, that give him eighty. Bit, no, 80. I'd give him a little bit more. Give than him that. an eighty, wouldn't you? So yeah, I, you give him eighty. Yep. You give him eighty, which is then while people are going to get, you're going to pick Bailey Dale or Caleb Daniel first. Yeah, he could be the one that you go. Oh, I've actually got some upside out of him. Yep. That's about it because I don't think we're going to be looking at any cash cows from these guys here. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say about those guys. Oh, I can guys. see why you uh, talked them up as being the most relevant. relevant. Six players last year with a ton. No. That just sums them up. That's what they do. I did. Uh, it probably was only five in the home and away season though, Cow. Oh, jeez. Because I counted Toby McLean's ton in the final. <laughs> that still <laughs> averaged it. <laughs> In the 2022 season? When are season? we allowed to count it? And I don't when know. are we not allowed to I count it? I am so confused. I'll talk to you after this. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll explain it all to you. Right. The positions aren't just made for fantasy. What? It's <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Sign up to my TED Talk, which will be coming soon, about <laughs> helping Calvin get his brain around all of this. Jeez. Bailey Bailey Smith for DPP. May not or not be available on our (laughs) podcast feed. You can catch that on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to keep clicking back to afl.com.au slash fantasy for all of our preview articles. Jeez, there's been some good ones. Oh, yeah, crackers, mate. Including the Bombers one. (laughs) This Bulldogs one's good too. (laughs) It's a good bounce back, dog.